Hey guys, welcome to channel Dev Kage. In this video, I am going to show you how to create a simple typing text animation in Flutter without using any external package. And just a word of caution, if you are totally new to animations in Flutter, I would suggest you first go through some of the videos uploaded by Team Flutter explaining animation basics. It will make it easier for you to understand this and probably a lot of other Flutter animation videos available on YouTube. So let's get started. First, I'll extract out the string into a separate state variable called string. And then, let's wrap this text widget with a tween animation builder. This widget has three required properties, builder, duration, and tween. If you check the documentation for tween animation builder, you'll find that it takes a type parameter. This parameter indicates the property that we want to animate. In this example, we want to control the number of characters displayed by the text widget. So I'll specify int as the type parameter here. Which means the second parameter that we get as input to builder will be of type int. Now let's move this text widget inside the builder. Right now, we just want to return a text widget from this builder. But if you have a complex widget tree that you want to return from here, and if some part of it does not really depend on this value input, you can specify it as the child property of tween animation builder. This will avoid unnecessary rebuilds of that child widget. So next, we have this duration property which controls how long the animation will last. I'll set it to duration of 3 seconds. And at the end, we have tween. This needs an object of tween which controls the start and end values of the property being used by tween animation builder. As in our case, this property is of type int, I'll use int tween. Begin value of this tween will be 0 and end value will be string.length. Which means that at first, we'll show 0 characters from the string and by the end of this animation, all the characters of the string will be displayed. Now to see this animation, I'll go to the text widget and on the string, I'll call substring method. This method takes a start and end index and returns a new trimmed string with those values from the original string. And now as soon as I save this, you can see that the animation starts automatically. It runs for exactly 3 seconds and then stops. If you want to have a cursor at the end of the string, you can just add an underscore to the substring in the text widget. Now all this is good, but with this approach, your animation will run just once and you will not be able to decide when to start it. Such animations are called implicit animations. They start running as soon as they are created. But let's say you want to start this animation only after getting some user input. In that case, you'll have to create an explicit animation. So let's see how to do that as well. First, I'll copy and cut this int tween because we'll need it later. And now we can replace this tween animation builder with an animated builder. This widget has two required properties, an animation and a builder function. For now, I'll just return a simple text widget from this builder. Next, we need to provide this animation builder with an animation, which is just a subtype of listenable. But before we create an object of animation, we'll need to create an animation controller. This object helps to control the underlying animation. So I'll add a member of type animation controller in this state class. Now let's override the init state method to initialize this member with an actual animation controller. Animation controller has one required property known as vsync, which is nothing but a ticker provider. If you come from a game development background, this term might be familiar to you. Basically, this ticker provider helps the controller to generate double values from 0 to 1 every frame for given duration of time. So instead of creating our own ticker provider and managing its life cycle, we can add the single ticker provider state mixin to our state class. This makes our state class a ticker provider. So in the animation controller, we can specify vsync as this. Let's set the duration for this animation as 3 seconds. This completes our controller, but as I said, Animation controller always generates double values from 0 to 1. But we need int values starting from 0 till length of the string. 
which means we'll have to write some kind of mapping function which will take the double value from animation controller and convert it to an interpolated integer. But fortunately, Flutter has us covered. We can use the int tween from previous example to do this in one line. On this int tween, you can call the animate method by passing in the parent animation of type double that you want to interpolate from. So here, I'll pass in the controller. And as you can see, this call will return a new animation of type int. So to store this animation, I'll add a new variable of type animation int in the state class. And now we can store the new animation in this variable. An animation controller also has its own internal state. So to make sure that we do not leak any memory, I'll overwrite the dispose method and call controller.dispose in it. Now we can use this new animation as input to the animated builder. And similar to previous example, I'll use the substring method on this original string which starts at 0 and ends at animation.value. And to make sure that all the new code inside init state gets executed properly, I'll do a hot restart. And as this is now an explicit animation, it will not start automatically. To control this animation, we'll have to call forward method on the controller. So I'll quickly add a floating action button for this scaffold and inside the on press of this button, I'll call controller.forward. And now if we tap on the floating action button, you can see that the animation starts. If you want the animation to be repeating, you can call the dot repeat method. This will keep looping the animation from start to end. And if you want the animation to go back and forth, you can set the reverse flag as true in repeat method. And just like before, you can add an underscore at the end of the string to indicate a cursor. Ok, now just as a bonus part, let's see how to create your own animated text widget, which you can use anywhere without having to create an animated builder. For this, I'll create a new class named typing text, which will extend from animated widget. As animated widget is an abstract class, we'll have to override and provide definition for the build method. For now, let's just return a text widget with a string. And to store the string, let's add a final string member. As this member is final, we'll have to add it as a formal parameter to the constructor. We'll also have to call the constructor of base class using super. And for super, we need a key and a listenable. So let's quickly add two more parameters to the constructor. One for key and another for listenable. And now we can pass on these two parameters to the base class. Now inside the build method, we can get a reference to the animation by casting listenable as animation of int. And just like previous example, I'll get the substring from the string using animation.value. And that's it. We now have a new widget called typing text. So let's replace this animated builder with the new typing text widget. I'll quickly pass in the string and animation as the inputs to this widget. Now if I save this and then click on the floating action button, you can see that it works exactly as before without the need of a builder. So that was it for this video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, hit that like button and consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.